Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 1st, 2012. I am David Nemzaski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Now, before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share a few quick notes with you. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Kindle, Nook, iPad, and other e-readers. You can also get a paperback copy for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. Go to financialbin.com, click on the book section at the very top, next to the login button for more information. Now, secondly, we are, in, we are wrapping up the editing and formatting process for Landlord Intervention. This is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. And we plan to release this book later this year, or, po- or I'm sorry, later this month, or possibly uh, sometime in June as well. Uh, now, lastly, my, my last note here I got for you is please join the movement and sign the E2 petition. If you go to financialbid.com, it's all it's all right there at the at the top. Just click on the button there. Yeah, I've also done an article about it uh, last week on financialbin.com on Friday. Basically, the E2 movement is an, uh, or, or entrepreneurial education. <clears throat> it was started by Anthony Domenico, and it aims to make entrepreneurship a part of the core curriculum for all public school students in grades 4 through 12. Now, it's a really great cause. Uh, just go to e2petition.com and sign the petition right there. Now, let me introduce you to today's guest. His name is Randall Bolton. Randall is the CEO of Lucidity, a consulting practice, and he's the author of Painting with Numbers, Presenting Financials and Other Numbers so People Will Understand You. And he joins us right now. Randall, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. Thank you for having me, David. Uh, it's no problem at all. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, Randall, the first question I have for you is can you take us through your career coming out of Princeton and Stanford and then becoming a finance executive in Silicon Valley? Sure. First of all, I had a lot of summer jobs as a computer programmer back in the 60s and 70s, and I think that's where I got my appreciation for the challenges involved with organizing a lot of complicated information, and it always stayed with me. But uh, I, I, I went to to Princeton and got my undergraduate degree in economics, and then I did something that isn't done much anymore. I went straight to business school uh, out of uh, undergraduate college and came west to Palo Alto, fully intending to eventually come back east and and never did. Uh, I stayed in Silicon Valley. I spent a couple of years uh, as a management consultant with SRI International, which is still a big consulting company, Mm -hmm. and decided that I wanted to try my hand at at high tech at a time when Silicon Valley was an exciting area. I I started with a couple of big companies that are kind of legendary in Silicon Valley, Tandem Computers uh, in the the late 70s and early 80s, and then Oracle Corporation in the three years right after they went public. And then I became, I, I wanted to be a CFO and ended up going to smaller and smaller companies. A couple of them, one of them was uh, Broad Vision, uh, did well enough to have an IPO, and we were one of the rock stars of, of the bubble uh, back in the 90s uh, of, of the of the Internet evolution. Right, and right. Uh, in, in the last few years, uh, while I've continued to enjoy being a, a CFO, my real passion is how you present information clearly. And I gravitated toward Lucidity, the consulting business that I operate, and writing painting with numbers. Now, now before we get into the book, Randall, could you tell us a little bit about Lucidity and your work as CEO? Sure. There are a lot of former CFOs in Silicon Valley who just don't want to have uh, nine to five, five, six day a work a, a week, W-2 jobs, and so they go out and become uh, consultants, and most of them uh, work as interim CFOs so that they take on two or three smaller clients that need a skilled CFO but don't need it full time. And that's not my focus. My focus is on short, very specific engagements in task areas that meet two criteria. One, they do need a senior level CFO skill, experience, and perspective. And second, there are task areas where organizing and presenting complex information is a critical element. So some examples of those kinds of areas 
are incentive comp plans, commission plans, MBO plans, uh, reporting packages, management reporting packages for both smaller and larger companies, um, uh, business models for entrepreneurs mm -hmm who are trying to raise money, and a business model is an absolutely essential part of your investor pitch, or even, in some cases, numbers-oriented marketing collateral. Uh, it's, it's things like price lists and value propositions where the numbers are essential to helping you get a sale. So that's, that's lucidity in a nutshell. Gotcha. Now, 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 can you tell us about what led you to write painting with numbers? Obviously, you have this extensive background. Uh, what was it that such a you know compelled you to write this book? Uh, being a, a, a finance manager and then a CFO, I saw so many examples where little changes made a huge difference in how well your audience understood the information you were presenting, right. and it was never it was never an issue about the math. It's, it was one of those – there were all these situations where instead of spending time having your audience understand and discuss the underlying content of, of a report with the presenters, mm -hmm. three-quarters of the time was spent just explaining to the audience how to read the report. And it's a terrible waste of time. It leads to confusions and misunderstandings and frustration and, and, and also a lack of respect for a presenter who can't be understood coherently. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the book? Maybe, maybe who's your target audience and what is your main goal with it? Well, I have lots of target audiences. Anybody who presents numbers uh, right. is, is, is a potential reader of, of painting sure. with numbers. And that includes accountants, financial analysts, but it can include marketing analysts, people who work in the public policy arena, uh, litigators who are trying to help to get juries to understand uh, how the numbers work in a particularly complex civil case, uh, investor relations professionals who are presenting corporate information to an audience. Uh, there, I, I really have three main goals. The mm -hmm. first one is that I want to present the rules. My, my central premise is that presenting numbers effectively is a communication skill. It has rules and best practices very similar to the grammar, uh, spelling, vocabulary, sentence structure, all of those skills that you spent years learning in an effort to become an effective writer and speaker. The mm -hmm. second thing is, if you're going to explain the rules, and you're the first guy to explain the rules, and I think I am, then you need to explain to people why the rules are the rules, why you right. write justify numbers, why it's important to make sure that your audience can actually read the information, and how you make it easier for them. Uh, and, and the third point, and this is linking presenting numbers to every other communication skill is to talk about how the way you communicate affects your relationship with your audience. Let me give you a simple example. When, sure. when, you, when you see somebody who's writing clearly demonstrates mm -hmm. that he doesn't know when an apostrophe goes in the word it's, <laughs> the audience forms a conclusion about his literacy, even if right. it's, though it's a mistake that doesn't change the meaning of the sentence all of a sudden you've got the scarlet eye on your forehead uh, as, as an illiterate. And you, and you need to be careful about that. Right. And presenting numbers is no different from any other communication skill in that respect. Well, I, you know, I was an accounting major in college, but I, uh, I minored in English, so I know that that kind of stuff always bothered me, believe me. <laughs> well, but, it's, but, but the point is, those things, it, they're both about communications. And right. every career advisor will tell you that how effectively you communicate is central to your, your image as a professional. And that's whether Absolutely. you're, and, I'm, and my point is, that's whether you're presenting words or numbers. Now, Randall, I, you know, I, I guess I, I just thought of this. I mean, is there any, uh, was there any plan maybe to get this in, uh, you know, maybe an accounting uh, class in college or a, or a finance class? Because I think, 
you know, I mean, it, obviously, if you're a professional, this is a, this is a perfect book for you. But it, I, I think maybe try to get uh, before 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 people go into a regular job, get them before you know, get them doing it on a regular basis. I really think that you know, you know, I read the book myself. I just really think there's a lot of great points, especially in terms of uh, of PowerPoint and things like that. What, what are your thoughts? Oh, I completely agree with you. And 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 David, I know you put that in in the review that you published today, which, by the way. I, I found very flattering. Thank you, thank you for, thank you for your kind words. No but problem at your, all. Your 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 point is is um, is is right on. And any professional, actually, this was something I was saving for for the end of our conversation. Sure. But like every other communication skill, how you present numbers is critical to your personal brand image. And there are some people where presenting numbers is a central part of your job. You're an engineer or an right. accountant or a marketing analyst, and for those people, it's central to how effectively you're perceived as a communicator. And there are a lot of other people for whom uh, presenting numbers is not a huge part of their jobs, but if that's the case, when they are presenting numbers, it's usually because the stakes are really high. Right. You know, it's how many board of directors presentations have the people in, in the audience for this interview given that didn't involve at least a few numbers, for example. Uh, Absolutely. You're, or you're applying for a mortgage, or you're trying to make a sale, or, or, <clears throat> or something like that. And so whether you do it a lot or whether you only do it occasionally, either way, your ability to communicate numbers is very important to you, both personally and professionally. No, right. Away. In, in all of you, in all your years of experience, uh, you know you, you've seen a lot. I'm sure you've seen a lot of presentations, and you've dealt with countless numbers and countless reports. And you know, what are the top maybe two or three mistakes that people giving presentations involving numbers make? You know, and how can the book help? Well. First of all, when you say giving presentations, that may be you're standing up and giving a PowerPoint presentation, but it may be you're just emailing a spreadsheet to 50 people. So I want to make Absolutely. that clear to everyone sure. That, sure. that it's a lot like writing or speaking, <clears throat> that there are all kinds of forums. So I'd say th the main errors fall into two categories. The first one is just ignoring the simple little rules, things like not right justifying numbers, uh, or, or not putting a title or a timestamp on your report so that your audience has no idea when the report was generated if they're looking at the hard copy, or making the print too small for normal people to read it, or, or not using white space effectively to help the readers organize the information you're presenting to them visually. And all of yep. these are little tiny mistakes, but like the little tiny mistakes we make when we're speaking or writing, like spelling errors and little grammatical errors and that kind of thing, they add up. And not only do they are they a little bit of an irritant to your audience and it slows down their reading flow, but it can affect how the audience perceives you as a person and as a professional. So the first category of mistakes, and I gave you some examples, was mm -hmm. just not following the rules of how you put words on the page. The right. second big category of errors is not considering your audience. And think about things like this. How much time does your audience to ha have to read your information? Do they have three minutes? Do they have 30 minutes? Uh, another is the level of technical skill and their tolerance for jargon. There are some audiences where you should use jargon and you can put it in your the, uh, uh, arcane terminology in your reports. And there are some audience, and it's where it's essential to do that, and some right. where you should absolutely avoid it, or you'll be perceived as talking down to your audience. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is you have to assess your audience's level of interest and exactly what is it that they need to know. Do they need to know how you're doing against budget? Do they need to understand what the what the trend in expenses is? These are things that affect how you organize the information to lead your audience to the kind of conclusions that they need to form to do their jobs more effectively. Randall, what kind of feedback? I, I know you guys, I know, I think you just, because uh, I, I know I got my book a couple weeks ago, so I know you guys had just, I think, released it, correct? You had just had a print? 
Yeah, it's been in print for about a month. Okay, yeah. So what kind of feedback and media coverage have you received so far about the book? Well, I'm I'm very pleased with with that. First of all, uh, I've had three or four reviews. Yours was one of them, and and I appreciate that. No what, what I what, what's interesting about those reviews is that there are different areas. It's it's clear to me that that your review and financial bin in general is focused mm-hmm. on young professionals who are trying to Correct. get ahead in life and develop financial in, um, uh, independence. Uh, uh, other reviews have been aimed at engineers who are presenting information or at C-level executives who are principally not the presenters but the audience for the information or mm. it's their staffs who are presenting the information. So one of the things that gratifies me is that the reviews cover the gamut of the audiences right, that I'd right. love to have for painting with numbers. Uh, and I've... Um, Delivered. I've written some articles and had some articles written about the book that look at all of these perspectives from all of these different um, all of these different constituencies. Uh, uh, one of the ones I, I liked is an article uh, that appeared um, in a blog for um, entrepreneurs who can only be part of a website if they've raised X million dollars in venture capital. So. Oh, great. I'm 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 gratified by the by the range uh, of coverage, and and it's it's been flattering. So I'm I'm looking forward to more of it. Well, you know, I mean, I I I really enjoyed the book personally because you know, in addition to financial, I also have a full time job and I and I and I'm an auditor, so it really helped me in 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 kind of organizing my thoughts when I'm presenting to you know the higher ups or my boss or or just communicating with people and things like that and publishing my own audit reports. So I want to thank you for that because it's really helped me in my job, and and kind of along those lines, you know it. You know, obviously, I'm a member of Generation Y. I'm 27. So, if you give the members of Generation Y one tip, what would it be? Sure. the The tip is that presenting numbers effectively is a communication skill. It's central to your personal and your professional brand image, just as your ability to speak clearly and to write eloquently is. You should you should think about presenting numbers uh, in in exactly the same way. And the second thing that I'd want to say to the audience is you can do this. It's not about the math. Right. Uh, there, there is The first sentence of my book is this book is not about numbers. It's about presenting numbers. Right. And, and that's an important distinction to remember. Uh, in one sense, painting with numbers is a 300-page long pep talk to people who think they're not good at good enough at math to present numbers effectively, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, you know, I do want to say that um, uh, you asked about the reviews and the articles, and they are all mm-hmm. on my website. Uh, I, I provide links to them. Uh, and, uh, and the website is uh, paintingwithnumbers.com. That's uh, painting-with-numbers.com. And people and so you can, can buy the book off your site as well? Uh, the, I provide links. Uh, the books okay. can be purchased in, in brick-and-mortar stores at, at Amazon, uh, from the publisher, from Barnes & Noble. So all of those links uh, are available on my site, and uh, I, I appreciate everyone's interest. Now, are, are there any plans to, to offer it in e-book format? I, it it, it it is in ebook format. It uh, is that's too. Okay, just making sure. And, okay. Yes. Yes, you, you you certainly can. All right, Randall, I, I really appreciate your time. This has been a fantastic interview. I, honestly, I, I and I'm not just kidding when I say this, this has been one of the best. So I really appreciate you coming on the program. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate your interest. Not a problem at all. And best of luck with the book. Uh, you know, uh, I will, I'll check back with you in a couple months and see how things are going. I, I'd like that very much. All right. Thanks so much, Randall. You have a good night. You too. All right. Take care. Okay, everybody. That was Randall Bolton, author of Painting with Numbers. Now, make sure to check him out 
at now now the website isn't just paintingwithnumbers.com it's painting-with-numbers.com so make sure to get that right and include those two dashes in there and i want to thank you for joining us and make sure to check out financialbin.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for generation y and don't forget to pick up your copy of both entrepreneur intervention and painting with numbers till next time thank you for joining us i am david domzowski signing off take care